Hello, everybody. Today it's June eighteenth, and we are doing security and nonsense, and it's going to be a speedy episode because Wendell has a call at four. So let's Woo! do no sort, pure potpourri. Yeah. It's just we don't, there's <laughs> no rhyme or reason to this. Let's just get right into it. This is the security section. So of course, what do we have to talk about? Data breaches and ransomware. <laughs> Internal data from uh, breach to circulating online. CG Project Red. So this is the same data breach that we reported a long time ago. I guess the hackers have got whatever value they can out of selling it on the black market. Now you can get it for just pennies on the dollar. So there's all sorts of fun things in the leak. I think that leak included some of the cyberpunk stuff, but also all of the Witcher stuff. I think that was a compilable version of the Witcher. Wasn't yeah. It? yeah. Wow. Of course, you can get that for like $5 now. So <laughs> and maybe not much in piracy, but still, that's unfortunate. And <laughs> it wasn't just CD Projekt Red. It's also <clears throat> EA. Well, this one's a fresh breach yeah. and more video game stuff, which is crazy because there's no sort here. This is just lucky. <laughs> Hacker ah. still a wealth of data from game giant EA. They got FIFA 21, the entire Havoc engine, they think, and a whole bunch of other stuff. EA's not actually sure yet. They just said, well, it's pretty extensive. So many terabytes of data. A uh, Frostbite engine. Couldn't happen to a better bunch of people. <laughs> you think, uh, oh no, that's Activision. I was going to say it's going to affect Overwatch, but that's Activision. That's no. the other evil game yeah. company. Well, we've already kind of t talked about this, but this was the big story that we have now learned that uh, they paid, hilariously they paid, and didn't use the de-encryption tool because it was too slow. JBS paid $11 million in ransom after the hackers shut down the meat plants. So they got everything back up and running pretty quickly, but like you say, for most things, they did not actually use the decryption key. They used their own backups, which is good, but I gathered that there were a few things that weren't backed up and they just didn't have time to figure it out. So they were just like, all right, just pay it. Yeah, just get it running again. Get this meat out the door. I noticed that the ground beef was very limited this week, but all the other meats were still there. Yeah. Maybe just one building was still shut down. <laughs> think about how much worse this is going to be the more and more automated things get think think about when uber is fully self-driving i mean i know they sold off their self-driving division but think about it and think about when they get ransomware mm. or ups it's like ups can we've got 80 percent of our workforce replaced with robots and then they get ransomware or you know somebody gets into the uber network and falsely orders 500 cars to go to some unpopular <laughs> politician's house <laughs> yeah yeah strategically placed gridlock uh, well speaking of you know government and businesses in bed together ring sure does love cops she sure does love giving them a lot of information now we've <laughs> recently learned that ring is going to make public when police request your thing you got to go through that was it neighborhoods neighborhoods yeah. app you gotta it's going to be on there people can see it but there are other things that they do not want you to know about the police. <laughs> Ring refuses to say how many users had video footage obtained by police. This is kind of odd. Like, why would they do one thing and then also do this? Unless the retroactive number for this was just astonishingly large. Yeah, it's all of them. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> I think you're right. I think the number was so disturbing. Uh, they said, oh, well, could you put together a report? We'll let people know. And then they gave them the report and they said, oh, this never sees the light of day. Yeah. So, we'll see. Oh, we already talked about that one. Krista cut that story. I cut it. It's gone. It's just the Fastly story again. It was in. We talked about Fastly in business, not security. So, if you missed that, check it out. Now, this one I love because this goes back to so many leaks. Snowden, WikiLeaks, all of them, basically. Where we learned very horrible and terrifying things about people in power. But the narrative from the media wasn't oh my god look what these people in power are doing the narrative was oh my god these hackers must be stopped <laughs> remember the panama papers same thing here yeah. u.s super rich pay almost no income tax they got warren buffett and jeff bezos and elon musk and i don't even think the whole pay no income tax is like the worst of the problem the the, the business climate is literally it's like you have this business and it's producing, you know, a 7% return every year. That's pretty good. A lot of people would be happy with that. But these people, the way they think is, I want to spend a whole bunch of money. And if we have massive losses, fine, then I get a tax write-off for that. And if we have massive gains, that's great. I'm going to be happy with that. But if you're just making 7% a year or 20% a year or whatever, that's not enough. I could be using that money to either fund a moonshot that's going to make me a ton of money or get me a tax write-off. And that's sort of a perverse situation that we have. So they borrow money and 
then they get tax write-offs on the interest, but borrowed money is not income. Yeah. And there's all these ridiculous loopholes. Now, these three men are very famous, and uh, some of them are very well liked. Yeah. Uh, but now that we know that they didn't pay taxes one year, I imagine there have been calls for them to quit and for their deaths <laughs> and making fun of their haircuts and that kind of thing, right? Yeah. Uh, In some circles of the internet. Uh, but not but, nearly as many as you might expect. But not a full court press from the entire media? No. Saying that they're bad? No. That's weird. That is a little weird. Because I remember... Doesn't uh, Jeff Bezos own the Washington Post? Who maybe, owns the BBC? Maybe we shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> People don't like that. <laughs> Colonial is, you know, they're the ones that everybody's feeling bad for, but it turns out there was another victim, and they kind of kept it on the down low. Line Star is that victim. Uh, they struck. Uh, they were struck with a ransomware, and they had 70 gigabytes of their data leaked, so they're probably going to be targeted again. Um, yeah, and they weren't going to say anything, but... Uh, there was, I guess the leak was found on the internet and then activists like freaked out and then it was like, yeah, we were part of that too. And it is a good question. Is that 70 gigabytes? How much of a national security risk is that? Yeah. Because it's a pipeline. Is it, is it probably all their topo maps and locations of the pipeline? And it's like there's a section of pipeline that's like seven miles in this basically unreachable wilderness. That'd be a great place to attack the pipeline. They've probably, got the data. Probably various timings for things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, hopefully people don't want to attack the pipeline, but... I'm not worried about that guy that was working on the data center in for Amazon, but I am worried about nation states. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, there's several former Soviet countries that would be far more effective <laughs> than the Amazon bomber. Uh, we were really effective, at, you know, <laughs> catching Lowell here with his... Uh, you know, uh, with his ammonia thing, but meanwhile, the nation state people are having their way with the, uh, <laughs> the the ladder logic systems. And it's like, this is, guys, we gotta shift our priorities here. We gotta be not stupid. Well, if, you, if you're a Walmart employee, I would say look closely at this story. Think about parallels that are coming up in your <laughs> life. Because this is a big honeypot. Yeah. The FBI and Australian police ran an encrypted chat platform to catch criminal gangs. That shouldn't have been the headline. The headline should have been, the FBI was paying employees of this company, basically, and have since charged them with conspiracy and racketeering because they, quote unquote, had to have known it was being used for criminal enterprise. So if you remember, they took down another one of these services that they also infiltrated, but everybody immediately transitioned to this one because they were used to using the encrypted chat and everything, but the FBI was ahead of them. They had already infiltrated this one and they were waiting to set up those accounts. Yeah. So it's a pro move, you gotta say. No matter how you feel about the FBI, this one was well played. Yeah, but you have to look at this and then look at the recovery of the... Uh the cryptocurrency from the ransomware, the story, the story that we had earlier in the week, and it's like, are these things related? Almost certainly. And if they are, oh boy, that's a problem. Yeah, that's going to be an issue. Ransomware is not just limited to things that produce actual items like fuel or meat. Sometimes it's all about stealing the data. Ransomware hits Capitol, Kill, Capitol Hill contractor. So this is a, a contractor that provides a platform for politicians to stay in touch with their constituents when they email you to beg for money or run their website or whatever. This platform was also hit by ransomware and it was down for the better part of a week. Somehow speaking to their constituents wasn't this huge priority. <laughs> 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 what do you think if they had had a system like that for the lobbyists and that went down? Oh, that would have been fixed within it, like a day. Yeah. yeah. Although I don't think, I think lobbyists do it in person. <laughs> yeah, that, I was going to say that network is so clandestine that it would be barely even affected. <laughs> yeah. They're still using pigeons and ravens. <laughs> and coded messages like, what are your thoughts on... <laughs> Ukraine is in a bit of a tight spot because politically they're in one place and geographically they're in another. Ukraine warns of a massive Russian spear phishing campaign. So three Ukrainian, Ukrainian cybersecurity agencies last week have warned of a massive spear phishing operation carried out by Russian threat actors against the Ukrainian government and the private sector. So basically, this is a spear phishing campaign that's targeting infrastructure and targeting monitoring stuff. It looks like whoever the actors are, they want to get into 
uh, network administration. They want to get into IT services. They want to. It's a really fairly targeted, if extensive, spear phishing campaign, and it's probably going to be effective. Now that we don't have any sort of moving hard drives in all of our electronics, we have these fun new magnetic charging cables and stuff like that. They are very convenient, I will say. It's nice. It makes it less likely that you're going to, you know, like even if you yank it out, it's not like you're going to break a cord or something like that. It's great. But something that most of us don't ever consider could be an issue with that. MagSafe have a clinically significant risk to cardiac devices, says the American Heart Association. So somebody a couple of weeks ago, we, we were making fun of it in the nonsense section. And uh, somebody pointed it out a couple of weeks ago. And uh, the American Heart Association investigated it. And yeah, those really strong magnets and electromagnetic fields in the charging thing, they can interfere because, you know, some of those implants, they communicate electromagnetically through your skin can be a little bit of a problem. Uh, Krista, you mentioned that, uh, you know, your mom has a pacemaker and she's dealt yes. with this in other devices. Yeah, so my mom obviously has to avoid this kind of thing, but also even just like little things, like they make eyelashes that are magnetic, like you have magnetic eyeliner and then you apply the lash to that. My cousin was trying to sell her something. My mom's like, I can't, I can't use that. That will mess with my pacemaker. It's a weird thing to have to be constantly aware of. Yeah, conscious of. Well, we've learned some things about this, these, these hacks, specifically the Colonial Pipeline hack. And this is, uh, this is terrifying if you're an owner yeah. or a security team for one of these businesses, because how do you defend against this? <laughs> yeah. You would literally have to, I guess you would have to force everybody to put their stuff through that. This is one of the cool things that some of the cloud service providers do. If you use Duo or... Um, some of the Azure stuff, there's a checkbox in Azure that'll check everybody's password against have I been pwned and when they log in. And so like if you log in with a bad password, it's like the Chrome pop-up that's like, oh, this password is a known bad password from the list. So have I been pwned really truly is a, as an incredible service for humanity. Unfortunately, I guess Colonial didn't get the memo. No. Uh, hacked password. Uh, the, the Colonial hack happened because... Uh, of a hacked password and they left the user account with a hacked password on a VPN service so that's how they got in and basically had free reign but that person no longer was with Colonial Pipeline yeah, and yet just, the account was still active so basic yeah. security practices yeah. would have saved them yeah yeah sad I bet they'll fix it next time yep mm, maybe <laughs> I don't know if I have a lot of faith in our people right now well, that's private sector. I think they'll figure it out. We have a new, well, I guess it's not a new malware, but it's a new uh, vector for an existing malware. Yeah. Freakout malware well, worms its way into vulnerable VMware servers. So uh, VMware issued a pretty secure, pretty severe update for vCenter, which is like the virtual machine that manages your, you know, all of your VMware infrastructure. And it was possible to get remote root basically without logging in in vCenter and typically vCenter has full root access to all of your VMware infrastructure so from there the bad guys could launch all sorts of crazy attacks and this particular one gives them a remote web shell which means they have full remote shell access to your stuff uh, but also they're able to deploy ransomware against pretty much everything your data stores virtual machines the whole nine yards they've got the keys to the kingdom cleanup is not easy and assurance from you know later reinfection is also super not easy so this is the second major security incident that VMware has had. Might be time to uh, double your uh, security and uh, code review staff. It has been patched. So if you are not affected yet, you can get the newest version. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't patched, oh my God, you got a patch. Also, don't put your stuff on, on the internet. Maybe put the management network as a completely separate and locked down network from everything else. Probably a good idea. That your security team would tell you if you'd hire them. This is the worst story of the week, I believe, and I would have put it at the end of this section if I had sorted, but we're on a no-sort kind of day. So just, just enjoy this horror that is coming. This is coming, and you're going to have to take steps to fight it. <laughs> KC Startup Stealth Data helps companies unlock users behind anonymous web traffic. They talk about car dealerships, which are perhaps some of the you know, dregs of society. I'm so sorry. But they're really interested in knowing as much as they possibly can. The, the literal quote in this was, we get a lot of phone calls to our car dealership, but a lot of those people don't want to give us their phone number. 
We Wonder need why those phone numbers. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They need to contact you about your car's extended warranty. Ha, like it, it, it's really insane. So, like from doing stuff with ad agencies and car dealerships, I know that if you have eight, an eight hundred number, an eight hundred number blocks caller ID blocker because you're paying for the num you're paying for the call. They did ask this gentleman about like, isn't this an insane? privacy invasion and aren't you doing a horrible thing here he was like no 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 as a society we've traded privacy for convenience everybody wants this <laughs> but i i don't want it no you do krista you want it desperately so that's coming what they do is they try to marry up your ip address with all the other stuff and probably some uh, fingerprinting going on there to try and figure out exactly who you are when you visit a website and then they'll send that it's kind of like google analytics but a lot more information volkswagen has had a, a breach we should have put all these together but again no sort this week volkswagen says a vendor security lapse exposed 3.3 million drivers details so this sounds like a third-party analytics firm or an ad agency or something got the telemetry data or perhaps the sales data from their crm system and uh, it was mostly just identifying information like you know generic stuff but some of them it was also loan information yeah. credit information those pesky dealerships they don't have a security team moving on to nonsense we have 12 minutes <laughs> go, go, go. Let's, let's talk about the elephants First, the El uh, Google Translate for Elephants debuts. An online animal catalog lets you decode communications and other behaviors. I'm oh, sorry. To see uh, everyone's favorite pachyderm. Now, this is not all vocal. I don't know if any of it's vocal, actually. A lot of the examples they use had to do with the ears. Yeah. Yeah. Body. yeah. And it seemed like all of them translated to aggression. <laughs> <laughs> it's like holding up a tablet it's like okay google what's it saying to me and it's like it's gonna kill you but you've already been charged <laughs> so i don't know who's gonna use this but Th that should be a there. rick and morty gag they had the squirrel translation helmet or whatever they should do that with elephants and elephants are just like the most aggressive like thug voices <laughs> ever <laughs> uh, and last week we talked about we're sending those little water bears and squid into space to the space station to see what happens to them and then we're gonna freeze them to death but we're going to learn a lot. However, maybe we didn't need to do that at all. Maybe we didn't even need to leave the planet for this. This animal survived 24,000 years frozen in the Siberian permafrost, like Krista, who I think is now frozen. Oh, no. Oh. Hang on. I'll fix it. <laughs> the permafrost of OBS. Oh, I got to switch back to that. Oh, yeah. You're good. You're good. You're good. So this is a... Rotifer? Rotifer? Do you guys know what a Rotifer is? Nope. Nope. No clue. Anyway, he's alive and well, and uh, I'm sure there's another pandemic coming. Congratulations. Well, they, yeah, this is just the plot of uh, the movie. Yeah. What they, they failed to mention, or at least they didn't mention it at the very first part of the article, is that the reason they found this was because of how much the ice caps are melting. No, so, they, uh, they cut a, a core. core. They probably wouldn't have been able to find it before. Yeah, maybe not. Good. Well, a lot of times we have animals that will help us. They have very valuable service jobs, some more than others. And this one I would have to think is at the top of the list if you live in a place where this is an issue. And uh, thankfully, he has managed to finish his career. You got to think this is one of those like <laughs> low survivability careers, right? Yeah, he's Survi an old man. Survivorship <laughs> bias. Yeah. NPR, uh, after years of detecting landmines, a heroic rat is hanging up his sniffer. So they have a bunch of these. This one is the first one and also the best one and also helped other helped train other rats to do the same. Basically, it's like you find a landmine, you get a reward. You find a landmine, you get a reward. Magua. I said he caught like 70-some landmines and also some unexploded ordnance. What a champ. Neat. Uh, they said that he could continue to work, but he was visibly slowing down. So they were just going to let him retire. That's nice. Do you think somebody will adopt him from the, the, oh, yeah, the munition sure. squad? I'm or? sure he'll have a nice life. Yeah. He'll go live on a farm somewhere. Don't worry about it. Uh, Krista, you're an artist. How do you feel about performance art? 
I'm not. I'm cool with it. This is maybe stretching it a little bit into the absurd. Yeah, I would say. But were we not already firmly into the absurd here? Yeah. <laughs> Headline. Is it? I'll, I'll read it. Man who ate. 120,000 art bananas said he would have done it sooner, but he wasn't hungry yet. Well, look at the uh, look at the wall there. That was the that's the art piece. It was the art piece. It was the art piece. You know the craziest thing about this story? They said he sold more than one of these. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just like the stock. It's just fake at this point. They showed it all out years ago. Look how how blackened that banana is. You would like that because you like nasty, rotten bananas. I would I not know, eat that. They're not red and they're, they're ripe under yeah. that color. No. They should be green. Green is wrong. We got to fix your audio, Krista. Oh. <laughs> there's, there's no time. We just have to power through it. We have seven minutes. Actually, more like probably two, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, this is hilarious because... You know, we're talking about climate change. What can we do about it? <laughs> what are the solutions? I'm glad I was here for this one. Uh, once again, I'm going to apologize. I'm going to apologize <laughs> to the people of India. Because I've been crapping on them for the whole cow urine and poop thing. <laughs> this is no better. Lunar New Deal. GOP Rep. Gomert suggests altering the moon's orbit to combat climate change. Texas congressman asked whether there was anything the U.S. Forest Service could do to change one of those of the moon's Forest orbits Service. or the Earth's orbit around the sun. I think that maybe we should have a minimum intelligence test for public office. That, absolutely. You should just be out the next day. <laughs> it's like, astonishing. Or, or we should be a society where the shame from that is so extreme that you just resign. What if... After he said that, there was like an inner council of the U.S. Forest Service, and they were like, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's like, you know, think about the other things, like the level of embarrassment and idiocy, like throughout his entire career, that he hadn't resigned up till now, yeah. and then there's that, and he still hasn't resigned. Oh, I like, don't think he's planning to. What other crimes against humanity has he committed? So many. That have flown under the radar. So so many times th there were smaller cases smaller rooms where there were no cameras and he was saying the same kind of stuff to local people and they had no recourse yeah krista when you drive Rue around she is free roaming in the car right usually yes you don't belt her down and that could lead to tragedy it could dog ejected from car during sunday crash found on sheep farm hurting sheep well that seems like a happy ending so yeah that's, that's a terrible wreck. He was ejected and freaked out from the crash, so he ran. They found him on the sheep farm. He had not eaten or drank any water, but he was dutifully herding the sheep. What a good boy. Not anywhere in particular, just, <laughs> I guess, instinctually. I wonder if the farmer would have noticed, like, wait, where did this dog come from? Oh, it's surprisingly effective. You got to bail out. I think we can wrap this up if you... Yeah, I could do one more. All right. What a great one to do at the end <laughs> now a lot of uh lethal injection companies like there's only a few companies that make those drugs because it's like why would we be making drugs that just straight up kill people and they've gotten woke <laughs> and they've said we're against capital punishment we're not going to sell you these drugs and that's a little bit of an unintended consequence <laughs> arizona plans uh executions with gas used uh i'm gonna say zyklon b because i'm betting the algorithm doesn't know that and it would be less triggered by what the head headline actually says but uh yeah that's a real i mean I, I it's a i don't think we need to do this anymore we can as a taxpayer i'm cool with just letting them live forever at the taxpayer expense also famously horrific yeah in terms yeah. of although if you really want to go down the darkness there auschwitz used this oh Tr oh did I, oh, i'm sorry oh <laughs> we're done the one that starts with a t <laughs> they just used a tank engine yeah yeah that was way worse yeah so anyway, uh, that's exactly what it is. That Zyklon B is a brand name, not anymore, <laughs> but they're using the same thing. It costs three grand for a block of it, and you get the little pellets for the other thing, another grand. So for five grand, they've probably got all they'll ever need yeah. to kill everybody with. It is uh, efficient, and that is actually what the high commanders said about the two. The, one, the T was more efficient, but they preferred the A because the throughput was just out of control. They could just move so many through there so quickly. Good job, Texas Department of Corrections. Also, South Carolina, uh, firing squad's back. Yeah. You can get firing squad in South Carolina. 
keep going. All right. Bye. All right. We got six stories post Wendell. I don't know why he's taking his chair with him. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's PW post Wendell. So this is a great one because, you know, it's, it's wokeness gone wild. But where do we draw the line? Do you want, I'll read the I'll read that. You're reading all headlines from here on out. Okay. Everton University student Lisa, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, cleared after being investigated for saying women have vaginas. She also said uh, women are typically not as strong as men, which, all right. This is in the context of the whole Joe Rogan thing where she's saying that combat sports in particular should not mix genders, even in the case of transgenders. What do you think, Krista? Uh, I'm kind of inclined to agree with that. I'm going to say this right now, Krista, and you know, you, you might disagree, but I've, I'm very confident. Even if you gained 100 pounds or 130, or how many you had to gain to catch up to me, I will still whip your ass. Yeah, I think so too. I'll wipe the floor with like you. I could probably outrun you. But <laughs> Not if you gain 120 pounds, you can't. No. <laughs> so uh. yeah, they tried to do something about her. Now, she did not say that all women have those could that be an important distinction because some women definitely do there's no arguing that it's uh it's weird yeah the combat sports thing you know it's just it seems like that's a good way for someone to get injured you know what i mean i mean just in general that that's true yeah Almost guaranteed that one of you is going to suffer some kind of injury during a combat sport. I think the injuries might be more severe in that case. And in fact, you know, it's proven to be true. We've seen it, and it's yeah. it's horrific to watch someone with a, with very dense bones and heavy muscle fibers smashing a girl. Yeah. In my opinion. Now, with the rampant uh, unemployment situation and the uncertain future. You might be, if you're a young person, you might be thinking to yourself, you know what? There's always a fallback. I can always just join the military. But uh, maybe this headline will make you pause on that. Army tuition aid stalled by months long tech glitch, putting soldiers' futures on hold. So there's a program that will let you get reimbursements on your tuition as part of, uh, is it still called the GI Bill? That's what it was in. Yeah, I, I think it probably still is, but I'm not certain. That's what it was in Vietnam, at least. And you can get like $1,500 or whatever on payments and stuff like that, but you pay up front and then they reimburse you. Well, the web portal has been down for months. And universities don't wait months to be paid. No, they don't. So the government doesn't seem to be concerned about it. Fussed about it, yeah. Classic. Uh, A friend of mine actually uh, joined the armed forces and I don't know, he, I don't, he wasn't doing it for tuition aid, I don't think, but hopefully this doesn't affect him. But you get, so, I think they all get it, right? So if you come out and you want to go back to school, you always can. Yeah, yeah, it's always an option. God, that sucks. And the labor situation, it seems like that, you know, people are just not willing to take these jobs for whatever reason. I, every fast food place, have you noticed, Krista, every fast food place in town, interviews, interviews today, Guaranteed interviews, bonus, signing bonus. That they just they need employees and nobody wants to do it. I would venture that a certain website has more to do with this one. Yes. New Orleans strip club offering contract bonuses due to exotic dancer shortage. Yeah, why would you Exactly. If I told you, Krista, if I said you have to do one or the other. Yeah, I know you don't want to do either, but you have to do it or you're gonna die. Or actually I'm going to kill uh, your husband and your dog. That's, a, that's kind of how it works for a lot of women, unfortunately. It is sort of like that kind of choice. But I guarantee that you're going to choose the one where you don't have to actually touch other human beings. Right. And also you can make your own hours. Yeah. And, and you make a lot more money. Cut. Yeah. Like, it, it, there's no brainer. Why would you do this? Uh, I mean, there's got to be a, a, a rolling scale for attractiveness, right? Right. Maybe we'll get to a point where only the C-level students are at the strip clubs. Oof. I, but I, maybe it'll just go away or it'll uh, go into a darker place. I don't think so. 
because that's better for the girl. But I think there are a lot of guys out there who, you know, they live for that contact. But if they've not got any girls who will do it, though, then that just opens up, you know, room for trafficking. So, or they just start using people that weren't always girls. Electronic waste is a big issue. And uh, how much electronic waste would you say you threw away, Krista, when you moved to your new house? Not a lot, actually. Well, when I moved, so when I got married and moved in with my husband, I purged a lot of crap. Like, I had seven big body bags worth of just, like, crap that I had saved for years. Body bags? Yeah, like, you know, like the really giant trash bags. I've never heard those called body bags. Well, they kind of, I mean, like, I could fit in one. If you want to (laughs) could throw me in a standard size body bag from the grocery store after you gain your 100 pounds and we do our combat sport that's what i'll do I'll, yeah I'll throw I, well i don't know after i gain 100 pounds i might not fit it as well probably oh. though i'm pretty tall though but yeah I, I threw away quite a bit not not a ton of e-waste i would say but like just just garbage so much garbage well the g7 which is the seven industrial biggest industrialized nations of the world they're getting together to talk about this kind of thing, and some people have decided to make a statement. I like it. I'm digging it. G7, Mount Recycle More of leaders made from electronic waste in Cornwall. Cool. Not only it makes a statement, it reuses stuff that would have ended up in the trash anyway. Now, I, I, cool. I recognize Boris Johnson, and I'm mm-hmm. guessing Merkel is the only girl, right? Yeah, Merkel. But I, I don't know which one is Biden. I think Biden's on the end there. Well, that looks like Frankenstein. Oh, well, yes, they've used the green. It's kind of a weird cast. And like the hair? That doesn't, that's not a good vibe. Well, Trudeau's there, too. I guess he's next to Merkel. But they kind of gave him like a wide-eyed stare. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can recognize him. Yeah. yeah. I think that's Boris cool. Johnson is the best one, though, don't you think? Yeah, no, I recognize Johnson immediately. And that haircut is kind of in your face, but... So, yeah, this is just a statement about they need to do something about e-waste. I don't think they will. They definitely won't. I mean, this is like a major problem, but they're just like, oh, whatever. That won't get us elected again. This one is a bizarre story, and it's I guess it's kind of like the meme stuff where you never know what's going to catch people's imagination, and they're going to start buying. But here it is. Sales of Elizabeth Holmes swag are soaring online. It's like girl boss kind of thing. They do use the hashtag girl boss. Can you tell me what that is about? Uh, so there's kind of like this weird trend. And I think it's mostly, obviously, it's mostly focused at women where you you have like mugs and like little name placards that go on your desk and it just says hashtag girl boss mm-hmm. to imply that you are in charge and like a career woman. But they make, they just, you know, sell you a bunch of crap to make you feel better about yourself. And yeah. I buy into that. One woman was quoted as saying, I wish to God Elizabeth Holmes had multi-level marketing so I could join it. Yeah. Well, and like the girl boss thing is definitely something that you see MLMs use. Be your own hashtag girl boss. Look at those eyes. Look how crazy she is. She has the crazy eyes. I don't know. I don't know what that is. But here's the bigger question, Krista. Why am I so attracted to it? She's pretty. She just has really wide eyes. I mean, so do no, I. But I but the eyes enhance it. Like I know that's crazy, but somehow yeah. I'm drawn to it. AOC's got the same thing. My hatred of her is too strong to <laughs> to overcome it, but she's definitely got the same thing. And there's definitely something there. There's a, there's a glimmer of something. I'm like, oh, she's definitely crazy. Krista, I think you've played Among Us, haven't you? Yeah. Did we not play that on stream? No, we've never played. Oh. it. We couldn't play it because we were worried the chat would give it away, I think, was the... Because we do the multicam setup. And they definitely would. What's your thoughts on it? It's an alright game. It's like a fun party game, but it's not something I could play a ton. Yeah, it's say. like I short short sessions, is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's a short session for the game. Well, if you are a bigger fan than her, obviously, you might be interested in this, but unfortunately, I'm afraid it's already sold. You, you are no longer wow. able to get in on the bidding. Among Us character shaped chicken nugget sells for nearly one hundred thousand dollars. Honestly, I don't think it's that good of a match. Do you? I mean, it it looks like it, but those character models are 
like they're they're purposely very simple i don't there's no backpack i could pay such a big chunk of my house <laughs> and someone just used it to buy a chicken nugget <laughs> how do you what would you do to preserve that the nugget will be frozen and air sealed while it is shipped to the buyer although you know that uh the whole thing where they have the mcdonald's happy meals that never rot i bet the nuggets never rot oh yeah i'm sure it's pumped full of you know preservatives and stuff that keep it from dying i bet you couldn't compost that <laughs> actually just, not to compost meat in most piles but it would just be at the bottom of your compost pile always yeah it's like oh let's fish that out we'll put it back in there and hope it decomposes for next round not even the worms It'd probably give you worms cancer. Probably. And finally, perhaps if if not already, perhaps this will mark the high water mark of the NFT market. Because good I, lord, this is I don't know. Anthony Viner considers selling NFTs of his embarrassing moments. Cashing in would be nice, he says. What happened to his wife? She was a big part of the Hillary campaign. Is she still in politics? I don't know. All I remember is like that story broke and everyone was giggling because his last name is Wiener. And then he just disappeared off the radar. No, he did it again. Ooh, I didn't yeah. know that. Part. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. He got, he got busted twice for that. Oh, but so, uh, so they're saying, you're thinking, okay, what is the NFT? Well, they're saying it could be the first tweet that started all of this. It could be the lawsuit paperwork. He has that that he could give to. Uh, they could stuff about his laptop or whatever, like the the fifteen year old girl stuff. That could all be NFT'd. They asked him about it, and he was like, "Hey, you know, I wouldn't mind cashing in on it." That's it's so gross that like that is being considered, considering he was texting such young girls. Do you think those girls will get any cut of that? No. No. Also, it says here. Uh, all the email discoveries cost Clinton the election. I don't think that was that big a part of it. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that cost her the election. Pleading guilty to sexting a minor in 2017. Oh, he's oh he's out of he did two years in prison. Wow. What if he wrote a book? You. I guess you can profit off that, right? Because criminals write books and stuff like that all the time. Mm, uh, not if you're in jail, but I think after you've done your time, you can probably like a memoir. You could probably get away with that. I would say that, that means he could probably do the NFT thing. Even if it is kind of like unethical, they don't really care. It would still be legal. Is there such a thing as an ethical NFT? <laughs> Made with pure free range. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the unusual and awkward end to the episode, isn't it? Do we have any more updates? I think you've covered think everything. So. No, Rue um, Ru licked a spot on her wrist. And so she's got a bandage on it to keep her from licking it. I'm going to have to take her to the vet next week. Oh, licked it raw. Yeah. Why I don't do you know. Think she I don't know why. Uh, I, mean, I don't know if she got like a mosquito bite or like just an itchy spot. But she, we just noticed she was licking it a lot. And then when I looked at it, she had licked it raw. So she's she's got it bandaged now. You know, just, Toast this week has been very lethargic. Hmm. Like usually. I mean, it's perfect sleeping weather with the rain. But usually when I bring out the the rubber noodle toy mm -hmm. like i can't even take a step he's just right there he's so you know he wants it more than anything in the world and i don't know i mean, maybe he's just losing his uh, his joy with that toy but he just wasn't into it i did I break mean, out the laser pointer and he was very motivated by that but i don't know i'm what are you bored bored with the toy because who does that too she'll like forget she has a toy and then she's really excited when we pull it back out again you know who's loving it, though, is Crouton, because he never gets to, like, really unleash his playful side, because Toast is always yeah. right there, but now he's just, he's blossoming. He's loving it. You gotta get some video of that and put it on L1 Cats. I put a video up there not too long ago. Yeah. For those of you who are going to ask in the comments, it's L1 Cats, not Level 1 Cats. So it's on YouTube, just L1 Cats. I should link that up on our channel, actually. I'll do that here in a second. Subscribe. Because There's a place where it's, like, recommended channels. I'll put that on there. All right. All right. So, we will see you guys next week. Follow us on Twitch, on Facebook, or not Facebook, on the forum, Twitter, wherever social media things are sold. Store.level1text.com. Oh, you know what? We didn't get a, a wrap up of the orange drink either. 
Oh yeah, this but, is a uh, weird episode. If you want to send orange drinks, we still need more of those as well. All right, we we'll love see you guys. Bye.